Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Now I'm having a rough day when I don't even say, please be seated. I'm like, just sit down. It's fine. We're all fine. It's going to be fine. All righty. Ooh, this is a hard Sunday to preach, my friends. I want to offer us comfort, but I also want to set us on fire. Um, it's been a hard few weeks, hasn't it? We had um, a racially motivated shooting, and then we had shooting of babies in schools. Um, so it's, and frankly, the last few years have been tough. Do you feel like I preach the same sermon all the time? I'm like, ooh, things are rough. I feel like it's the same sermon over and over again. So it was like, well, then there's COVID, and then we were fighting about elections, and then there's a war in Russia and Ukraine, and then there's shootings, and it just feels like there's a lot, right? There's a lot. And um, we're going to do the same thing that we always do, because I feel like I always say the same thing. I'm like, well, it's really, really tough, and there's all sorts of discussions about what clergy should be saying this week. In fact, we're getting so desperate that one clergy person I know just posted, what do you guys need to hear this Sunday? Like, that's how desperate we are. We don't even know what to say anymore. We're like, what do you need from us? Um, And I feel like that's where we are as clergy in general. And I feel like as a counselor in schools, that's where I am. I don't have a thing to offer anymore. I'm really at a point of, what do you need? Tell me what you need. Um... And I think this is the perfect Sunday for that, actually, um, because that's where Jesus is. Um, Jesus, we, we had the crucifixion, right? And Jesus was raised from the dead, and Jesus comes back, right? And Jesus has spent a few weeks um, as the risen Christ, but back among the disciples, traveling around, talking to them, um, kind of prepping them for what's coming next week. Next week is... Um, birthday of the church, so it's, it's kind of our big day. I love Pentecost. It's a big day. But today, um, in fact, this week, so this is the Sunday that we celebrate the Ascension. Um, so the Ascension is when Jesus is like, okay, see ya. Good luck. It's been fun. Um, and, and so this is the Sunday that um, Jesus prays for the disciples. Because Jesus knows that this is not going to be an easy time, right? Um, The disciples have been used to having Jesus there. They've had a leader. They've had someone that they can follow and indeed worship. And he goes and he does the things. And we're like, woo, good job, Jesus, awesome. Um, And now now he's not going to be there. And if you think Jesus doesn't know that this is not... This is going to be rough on them. It's going to be super, super rough. And there's not a whole lot that Jesus can do, right? Jesus knows, okay, I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm leaving. You're on your own. I've, I've given you all the things, but I'm not going to be here to do it. So you're all going to have to do it. And Jesus knows. So Jesus knows that the only thing he can do is pray for them at this point. The only thing that Jesus can do is pray for them. And I think the prayer is important. Now, I get it. John's kind of convoluted and confusing, right? I mean, I've warned you that John is beautiful to read, but hard to understand. A good old Anglican right there. Um, We like pretty things, but they don't ever make sense. Yeah. Um, So, but what's important about this prayer so that Jesus says, this is going to be hard. And I know it's going to be hard for them. So I am praying that you are with them. And that they know that you are with them. That they know that I have been with them. And through my being with them, you are with them. And through them being together, you and I are with them. And that's really, really important. Because Jesus does not pray for it to be easy. Jesus does not pray for them to have the right words. 
Jesus doesn't pray for them even to know what to do all the time, right? He doesn't pray for cleverness or genius or wonder and glory and miracles and all that stuff. Jesus prays that they know that they are not alone. Jesus prays for unity, that when it is hard and they're struggling, they know that they're all in this together. Jesus prays for unity. Jesus prays that they remember that Jesus is with them, that Jesus has prepared them for whatever is going to come, and Jesus knows it's going to be ugly. We live in a sometimes ugly world, right? Sometimes it's rough out there. And Jesus knows that, and Jesus doesn't pray that it's utopia out there. Those aren't the words that Jesus prays. Jesus prays that in knowing each other, they are reminded of Christ. And in being reminded of Christ, they are aware that God is with them. That is the prayer that Jesus offered, and that is what you and I need to hear. Not that it's going to be perfect. It isn't. In fact, I hope sometimes we're set a fire with a need for change because it's not perfect. It's not. And there's nothing that you and I are going to do to make it perfect. Now, we can try and make it better, and I hope to God that you and I try and make it better. I really do. Because that's what we're charged with. We're charged with trying to make it better. We're charged with reminding the world that God is with us. That when you and I are together, God is here too. That's what we are charged with. You and I are not charged with the answers. We're not asked to give the answers. ones who knew because we didn't know whether to tell our kids or not so what do you say what do you say I don't know what to say I just know to love them that's all I know to do it's all that you and I are called to do is to love them because when a little kindergartner sits in your office while she's playing in the sand you're playing together she says to you, Ms. Meg, yeah, honey, what are we going to do when an intruder comes and we're in your office? Because you want to know what? Every child is trained for intruders. Every teacher is trained to take a bullet. Every teacher is trained to do that in their classroom. But this little girl didn't know what to do in my office because they, she wasn't trained to do that. What do we do? What do we do when we go to the grocery store and somebody comes in? What do we do? I don't know. And I'm not saying we're going to know. But I am promising you this. God is with us. Jesus is with us. And frankly, prayers are with us. And when you and I are together, God is with us. We don't need the answers. There are no answers. The only answer that you and I have is love. Ridiculous, wild, extreme love that doesn't make sense in this world because this world doesn't make sense, does it? Because we don't know how to love anymore. We don't know how to love sacrificially anymore. And that's where you and I come in. That's where you and I come in. We love ridiculously, unconditionally, obscenely, wildly, Enough so that when people look at us, they're like, what are you doing? Because it doesn't make sense. The Christ that you and I worship, the God that you and I follow, does not make sense. In a world of crazy, wild stuff and evil that doesn't make sense, you and I love in that world. And you and I hold each other a little bit closer. Because that's what we have. We have a Christ who says, I will pray for you. I don't have the answers. I don't have a checklist. But I will pray for you as my disciples. And next week, we will celebrate 
what happens when Jesus leaves because it's a big deal. It's exciting. It's wonderful what happens next week. But for right now, it's hard. It's hard not to have Christ with us. And so we love. We love wildly and without abandon. Hug each other. Hug your babies. Hug everybody. Don't give them COVID, though. Just, just hug them. Don't hug them if you're sick. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.